Okay, this sort of like of alcohol and stimulant situation I have going on in my system is not exactly kicking in a way I expected it to. I feel like more low key than I. I feel like yeah. I was expecting more energy, and I'm not exactly getting that energy which I was kind of mm. looking for. You know what I think is in order is some literary chat to get that energy. To absolutely, yeah. Get that energy up. <laughs> to really pump me up. To give me the pump I'm looking towards. Is some a great... self-effacing narrator. <laughs> right now to get us and totally slayful the first immediate thought i had when we started recording was i do not remember this asian woman's name <laughs> oh i do i have it i have it because it was something like really thai it's <clears throat> today we will be discussing i mean the story's called bozo bozo which i thought was kind of a slayful title before i even started reading it i was like okay I'm, by like, written by cam a... tama Van... oh fuck Mm. Cam Take a breath and Tama Vangasa. We really don't <laughs> mean to do like this. I kind of want to start thing. over. <laughs> We're just going to persist. If, you know, listen, we do a very minimal preparation for this, and perhaps was an oversight <laughs> that I immediately realized as we started recording was this woman has a very. um see even writing <laughs> this tightrope has a very i don't want to say ethnic or foreign but you know has a has a name which is unfamiliar perhaps to the american english tongue and that we should have taken a moment to you know get the pronunciation out but honestly <laughs> who's listening about four people perhaps so you know it is what it is truly and <laughs> Ma'am, I wish I could say that, like, you know, please accept my apology as if I was not going to, like, tear this story apart moving forward. Because, <laughs> I mean, I guess just spoiler alert, I was, not a f I was not a fan. Really? You liked it? I actually did. I mean, I listen, I thought it was, I thought well, it was fine. I thought it was absolutely fine, you know? But well, let's, let's, okay, let's get into our usual episode. Yeah. How are you feeling, Kelly? <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm feeling... I'm feeling like the stimulants just everything just hit hitting me at you all at once. <laughs> Incredible. And you know what? So uh, last episode, I got critique from my boyfriend, who was the first one to listen, and immediately told me I need to stop talking over you, man. <laughs> Girl, I'm right now. <laughs> Can we restart this no, whole thing? No, we have to keep going. Come on, just get your bearings. <laughs> oh fuck. Okay, wait. Let's see. It's eleven fifty nine, and I think we've been going for about five minutes. So we'll stop at twelve forty. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. I guess let's start. So we we're reading I really story. do feel like oh, I need so. to take it from the top. I'm like so confused. <laughs> Wait, no. Let's just. <laughs> this is organic, you know. <laughs> you're the babe. You're the babe. We can. So here, I'll pull it up on my phone as well. So. Wait, can we actually start over? I think this is good. You I'm feeling overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a little bit of a breath. I think just I. <laughs> okay. Shit. Okay, and all of my things are like not loading. So perhaps. Well, okay. Listen, I feel like we don't need to start over. I feel like we're good. Well, why don't we just start now and read? It? We don't have to cut anything. Oh, you're I'm right. Just, yeah, we don't have to stop anything. Can we just, oh, like, start I thought you over? meant yes. No, like. You know, just, just give our little, you know, more concise intro. Yes, okay. And then we can butcher the name still. <laughs> now I'm confused. Wait, do you want to start over completely and just cut? Or I mean, we, I, like, just, I feel like we start, bit? we like totally derailed the, I kind of want to start because remember we have all those questions to get to. Uh, and we will. And wanna... uh, let's well. Let's just start. Okay, okay. Let's go to the story. Okay. So this is Bozo by um, Suvan Cam Tamavangsa. Tamavangsa. Okay. We can Tamavangsa. Yes. Like. Tamavangsa. Suvan Cam Tamavangsa. So story Bozo. What we have here is a first a first person narrative, which I might point out does not start that way. It really kind of leads you to think. That's true, actually. Yeah, that we're getting into like third person com 
kind of omniscient. Right. Actually, so it does start off in that way. And I feel I feel like maybe I've misled before we've gotten to the the meat of the piece. So, so we can very save that comment. fiction workshop of you to make that particular critique. To not to absolutely name, not to name drop a certain someone which we both have workshop experience with, but you know, so very um MFA pill to sort exactly. of point that detail exactly. out. Exactly. But what I we think it's a little bit sloppy. It it is it it's I well I couldn't tell if it was like I think it's purposeful only because this narrator admits that she's a story she's writing stories about people. Wait, where did she do that? Um, like, do you mean the she abstract? Says, I wanna, she... I, like kind of in the abstract, yeah. But I think yeah, she is, is actually much, a writer, and it is very much a yeah that could be true based on like the conversation they briefly have and about occupations right. and what she says about herself and right. yes i mean uh, to speak in terms of like larger themes of this piece this is very much a story about making up stories about yes. people yes you know about being the observer right exactly and and i mean to to that point the sort of overall narrative we have here is a woman who is in her early 40s um, who frequents a, a certain bar on Tuesday and like Tuesdays and Thursdays and there's a really hot bartender. I want to ask you how were you picturing the bartender? Like, I, what, physically what were you imagining when you think of hot bartender? I well it's funny because what I think I think of as hot bartender is in fact different from what I think this character thinks hot bartender is. Oh very. In a in a slight way whereas like I think this character thinks like Abercrombie model. That's what I was thinking. I was getting like man bun, blonde, cut the jaw. Hawaii thing. Yes, exactly. The, the Hawaii surfer. surfer Maybe thing. Hollister is a more apt like yeah, exactly. Comparison. And I mean, he makes allusions to like wanting to go to the beach. So there's right. that He's whole like thing. A beach and that's man. that's exactly where my mind went immediately. Totally. But yours but took you somewhere different. No, it took me there for the story. But if I if you said to me like right now, picture hot, hot bartender, bartender yeah. that wouldn't be the guy mm. because I feel like this bar is like I'm like priced out of this bar likely. Oh, you think so? I thought this was just like a neighborhood dive. I mean, oh, you think so? Because we oh, know no, it's not oh, New right. York. We you're know right it's, it's not, not new york and they new are york. having shitty potato things yes but i mean i do feel like this is giving like a little bit like american sports bar and not yeah. necessarily dive and so i think of like a dirty oh, like baby young girl post like pop punk like bartender interesting that's very like, milwaukee hot, yeah that's hot bartender to me like serving pbr or whatever um but anyway and then another question off of this were you imagining the narrator as Asian because it was written by an Asian woman? And are we to interpret this? I feel like this is a self-insert narrative. I feel like this is That's very so much from the writer's perspective. But maybe I'm just saying that because she's a woman. But I was making the same assumptions about the last story we read about Zaki's right, neighbor's that's true. Um, Did I that occur that to you? a really interesting, I mean, honestly, kind of like a bigger picture question I'm trying to think of, like, do I usually and if I do or like don't imagine yeah like imagine and i think i largely like don't have visual like imaginings of something that is so voice driven like i this. don't either and so no i don't think to, i did and, and i mean this piece of, and she also says in her interview but i noticed this as i was reading it like she makes a very conscious effort to not reveal very much about the narrator besides the monologue that she's giving essentially right. through telling this story like which, we don't get physical descriptions we don't get really any details about her life exactly which is actually i mean shall we wrap up the plot but i have a i have a poignant note that i actually yes, made yes, while yes. reading this uh -huh. regarding Thank you so much for being prepared point. while i'm just fucked up because i read this maybe no i mean i mean ago. same um <laughs> <laughs> ignoring my little uh -huh. panic attack my existential crisis but like no i i think uh, to wrap up the plot she has been you know kind of be like quick, yeah yeah like ogling the hot bartender um it, she finally gets up the nerve and she's like creating these narratives in her mind about like what he does and like after after work and all this stuff and finally she's like i'm gonna ask him out and she we learn likes to go to the aquarium um which is a place that she can think so she asks him uh will you go to the aquarium with me which mind you also we don't actually hear her say we just have the 
yes. reportage of what of he says what back. What the report is, yeah. Which is, I don't think that's a good idea because I have a girlfriend. And then, you know, that's kind of where the story hits. It's yeah. And he, then we get like, um, like there's also a regular customer, and he's like, Ah, oh, yeah, I knew he had a girlfriend because right, she's going like, on about how, like, old well, he man. didn't tell me. Yeah, it was like some old man at the bar who also is a regular, and then. The old man is also like, and she comes here on Fridays too and sits right. right there. And then, you know, then she goes to the bar and sees the girlfriend. She's like, she's beautiful. And yeah, and just like me, but different. Yeah. And, and I listen and she calls him Bozo, hence the title of the story. And then I realize that they're really serious. And then she like leaves the bar and like softly cries against yes, the and she brick repeats wall. Bozo, Bozo to herself. Yeah, and outside. she says, "I wish I could have him in my mouth the way she does." And I was like, "All right, well, you know, there's the kind of sex I want from every New York piece I read." But then I was thinking, you know, truly protracted. I, if, I, if I really got what I wanted out of this story, um, the second that the old man tells her that um, he knew that the bartender had a girlfriend. I was thinking like, okay, how would I finish this piece? And I was thinking, okay, I would have her start yeah. masturbating right there at the <laughs> bar for the old man. Like it just, it, it so, snaps yeah, her and she's like, I'm going to start flicking my bean for this old man as the bartender watches. But again, perhaps that's why I do not have a story published no, in the New Yorker well, and uh, Tamasa Vang, had... oh, shit. Oh, that's her last name. Tama Vangsa does. Yes. Okay. Now, yes. Okay. So plot over. No, I, I think that was, I actually kind of like your idea of her you. flicking the bean at the end because... It, I think that would take the story where it needed to go. <laughs> and frankly, I was dissatisfied with the sort of soft domestic ending. But again, as we're establishing the more we're talking, like it this is... It is indeed the New Yorker. Yeah, exactly. Like they can't exactly, I guess, have cream pies and bean flicking. But why not, though? You, you know, know like, I mean, not? yeah, it's adults reading this magazine. Like what are the advertisers going to get so mad? You know? you know, I mean, prob probably, probably, but that's like why I do feel that this piece, I thought it was actually something uh, kind of maybe different uh, in tone, tonal qualities than the interview um, with the author leads me to believe, which is confusing and kind of puzzling to me because where this piece really hits its stride is when it leans into this like self-effacing narrator, like we don't know anything about her. We just have her like internal thoughts like we we get to know her in that sense but like we don't she doesn't like have a body to us and I was like oh it's, it's really doing something interesting about like uh kind of the the story that she's making up about herself at the same time that's true so these moments of kind of earnesty at the end and I didn't even read them as earnest moments until I read the interview and I was puzzled by that like yeah. where the, the in the interview with the author she's like you know, I thought it was very beautiful that the narrator, like, the narrator becomes beautiful and, like, um, essentially, like, she wants him to be happy. Yeah. But I don't like, believe that this that narrator wants, wants him, to, him be to be happy. No, and yeah, that she's me, disgusted. She's right, angry, yeah. That to me is far more interesting. Seeing that and, like, being like, oh, then well, I to, guess they are happy. I'm going to walk out the yeah. bar and softly cry against the right. exterior. So I, I think agree. that's really... Yeah, it's sort of bizarre, and I guess, I don't know, it's like, you know, me and you, I feel like we can always transpose interest onto something, Yeah. like, and, I mean, I feel restrained to sort of say that this was kind of like a hack job, but, like, if the intent was full earnestness with this, does it feel like a hack job to me? Like, I mean, certainly, with all these New Yorker stories, that like, they are well-written and sort of, right. you know, a treat to the read. The prose but, like, is very nice. Exactly, like, the prose Clean. is nice. And I think for an internal monologue, it does well. There are some touch points where I feel content-wise where I was just, like, kind of, like, cringing out a little bit. Not because anything was, like, egregiously tacky or tone deaf, but because it felt sort of, like, paint-by-numbers, like, millennial emotional life. But, yeah. like, you know, it was just, you know, it was fine to read. But does, do I feel discounted thinking about whether or not this is, like, an earnest emotional effort by this author, by this writer? I mean, I guess not. I mean, I'm, yeah. I, honestly, I mean, after reading this, I kind of had a sort of negative impression. I think I, I'm just sort of yapping right now, honestly. No, like, I, I mean, it's it's interesting because I do think that the interview really does change the way I read this. And, and I not when in I read the interview, you know, 30 minutes ago, I felt the same way, but I 
literally can't recall a fucking thing about that's the- okay <laughs> girl that's why i'm here like <laughs> all right bring up some quotes okay so one thing i thought that was interesting let me first i'm going to head to the the interview and read um what the author has said uh no i don't actually want the audio i want the transcript of the interview um but she she talks about uh the sort of ending and the narrator where the fuck is the interview <laughs> oh here. A different tab. here oh. it's okay Hair open slide. a new tab okay i'm boomer um <clears throat> so do 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 uh nope 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 aha the question um is uh it's about the reversing the male gaze which we can talk about but yeah the the author uh, responds and says um when we are in the story we realize it's the narrator who really is beautiful she's just someone who wants to go to the aquarium she could be angry with what's happened to her but she imagines the narrowness of a man's circumstances she cares if he's happy and even if it turns out that he's not happy she leaves that alone because that might be what he wants to be unhappy because no one is going to come for your unhappiness when she learns about his girlfriend she doesn't do what we are socialized to do and imagine a rival or imagine something ugly for him Instead, she sees this girlfriend as a woman who'd be just like her, who wants good things for this man. I, I yeah, just, I guess I didn't necessarily get that from reading it. I just, I just think and I find it sort of a corny, wait, like sort of theme to transpose on your story. Yeah, because I didn't see, and I get the. So here's the here's the quote yeah, from and the didn't story. Yeah, particularly moved by the fact that like the girlfriend was actually beautiful and that he did have a life. It just. I don't know, it seemed like she was pissed off that she didn't get to blink. Right, which which I think would be really an interesting angle to explore yeah, to here like because go yeah, deep with and, it. and to run with because I mean the quote in the story, I mean here's a a bridge version is women are for the most part good people, nice, and if they're not nice, people make them feel bad about it. So they have no choice but to learn how to be nice. A ton of been caring, thoughtful, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um you don't even have to try very hard. Just look clean and pretty. I wondered if he was happy. Being unhappy is comfortable. No one is going to come for your unhappiness. And really, you don't have to do anything about yeah, it if yeah, you don't yeah. want to. So my question is, like, I don't see a reversal of, like, that uh, that sort of, like, um, desire to revel in unhappiness, and which also, is interesting to me. And also, I just feel like, you know, her intent here to make it a reversal of what we're like socialized to do while cognitively that seems like kind of an interesting subversive thing to do when you actually get down to the brass tacks of reading a story like there's like no kind of dramatic tension there or like anything yeah. interesting to latch onto. like again it's like a oh you take your vape pit and you say hmm, okay and move on with your day like yes like yeah, uh, congratulations yeah. to this woman for being so this narrator for being so evolved and being so mature in her perspective on this man's life but like i don't know that doesn't really give me like juice as a short story reader you know like i don't really care how mature and evolved this woman is you know i want her to be a cunt I mean, like, you know i'm reading a story girl like girl, i'm taking time out of my day i don't necessarily need you know especially reading something fictional to be like sort of in yeah. awe of like the moral and sort of ethical and cognitive superiority of the narrator like i don't really care i wanted to flick her bean for the weird old man that's sitting next to her i think that's a good point because it it is it is this story is sort of um building its crux on that sort of moral and that's, that's uh, not like morality. a shocking reversal to me either. That's not something that makes me like pause and ponder and either. Like, it's within... like, oh, well, good for her. She seems well adjusted, yeah. I guess, you know? No, but even Congrats, within... she took it in stride. Right, Like, right. <laughs> even within the story itself, though, like there's no indication, like the, yeah, there's really no indication no. for that move at the end towards the pandemic um, either. Oh, that was another it, thing it I wanted to bring is up. It's a strange you, yeah. pivot just given that the, the story itself doesn't seem interested in morality so then for it to end on a note of sort of moral triumph seems uh, just tonally at odds with the first half of the piece and also which just, doesn't make sense it would be more interesting if she flicked her bean line, <laughs> you'd think that the through line would be like not that she leaves and like cries and like imagines having him in her mouth the way his girlfriend would it would be like i don't know like 
just you know sort of off into the sunset and strutting forward right you know like I mean? fuck just, this i mean it's, it's incongruent which to is borrow a word interesting from, you know. yeah exactly and it's i mean this is like a very i mean it's a curated look at this scene through this this character specific psyche we could say like it's it's the the first person is but like her even, writing about it even then like, but that I, makes even less sense just, to me yeah, I know, at like, the like, end it seems like not very intimate at all if we're getting a picture into this woman's this woman's interpretation of the events that are moving forward like like right. if, if we are doing first person which it seems like which by the way also pisses me off now that we've read two of these stories and they're both like first person narration all the grief we hear about first person in our like workshop setting it's like well, it kind of seems like every contemporary writer is writing in first person. And, and like there's the an opportunity of... to do it really well. I know. And this, I and don't think does it. And it didn't take the yes. opportunity. So you know, then it's like, it, I understand yes. the, the critique if this is, you know, the stuff that's out there. But it's, but it's like, not to say that this was over. I actually thought it was, I wish I hadn't read the interview. Because without that, <laughs> I think I would have found the ending. I wouldn't have noticed it to even hit on that, like, tonal level. Like. I mean, overall, like, I mean, I thought the story was perfectly fine. I preferred last week's story, if we're going to keep uh, running a ranking. Yeah. But, oh, that was the other thing. I was completely imagining this, like, pre-pandemic. And it almost yeah. felt, like, kind of shocking and anachronistic, the inclusion of the pandemic. It was. And I guess I had to kind of... Part of this, I think, was is me having to, like, come to terms with the fact that, like, the pandemic is going to be something that's, like, referenced in, like, sort of millennial brain right. short fiction for, right. like, years to come, like, fiction in general. And I just find it kind of choogy. Yeah, like, I think we it should is. just, like, move on generally. Because it doesn't necessarily, for like, better or worse. Didn't it feel cheap? Yeah, I was, like, it feels. I was just like, oh, we're going to, like. It feels I, I was unearned. Kind of shocked. Yeah, it feels unearned. Um and sort of tossed in and I actually I I can appreciate it if there's sort of like a um a cultural aspect which I think it's striving for like oh to, to highlight like that people think about relationships differently post pandemic could be interesting but it's uh to me I actually don't objectively find that super interesting and the other thing exactly. is this story puts it it does not posit that at the beginning so you need to I I think you need to hint at the inclusion of also, it earlier if you're going to do it like talking about this now it makes me think like i feel like you know it looms so large in our general just cultural consciousness that like i feel like everything that needed to be said about quarantine about like the psyche of the pandemic and life post pandemic has like been said already in multiple tweets and, and tiktoks and instagram reels and i would argue too like, I, I don't think there's anything to explore like there's not really fertile ground it's been like kind of fucked to death by just general yeah. discourse. I, I would also agree that actually the most interesting stuff to come out of the pandemic happened during the pandemic yeah, too. Exactly. Like under those constraints and now retroactively throwing it in is just sort of like Chewy. a like, nod to weirdly, like, like cheap. And I will say too, I am actually kind of a fan of like post 9-11 fiction in a way that I think is completely different because 9-11 always looms large in your mind it really does I mean <laughs> yeah my some of my you earliest your next images stick. yeah just I should. be fully 9-11 girl yeah I think I think I could definitely I'm definitely Even gonna write a personal piece life it. yeah I just constantly talk about 9-11 with people keep, I mean yeah I went through I mean I watched all the docu I mean and all the like online documents did you the ever watch the one about the woman who was like lying about surviving and she would like go to a bunch oh. of like survivor groups and they like exposed her for like not being yes near. yes I did that one Slide. came out only a few years ago I think loose change 9-11 is like the big like conspiracy ones about like the the gunpowder and the steel not gun yeah it was like traces of something explosive in the steel that I was used to create these buildings about 9-11 I, I think it's well i actually i just think it's interesting like the cultural shift that is not something that i think happened do you think women care COVID. more about 9-11 because it's like no. a big plane ramming into like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I like think... a big arab controlled plane like ramming into like a sweet innocent american but building. that's like the bradley cooper like stan you know well american sniper bradley cooper oh shit i like that's never their saw like that, wet yeah, dream yeah. so i feel like quite literally i mean we know some literature that's been basically wet dreams written about that so <laughs> it's like we can't help ourselves this episode i know it's <laughs> fine wait i have okay speaking of i have a question for you that i came up with yeah. while taking notes 
Um, no, have you ever heard of a successful, you or anyone else, have yeah. you ever heard of a successful customer service employee slash regular, like cafe regular, restaurant regular relationship? Have you ever heard of this working out? And if so, what was the context? Like specifically romantic? I mean, I guess it could be sexual too, but like, I just the I only, guess I do have a sexual. One. I mean, really, the only, I mean, two things come to mind immediately when I worked at a restaurant, like my ex's restaurant. Mm -hmm. There was a, you know, a bar, and there was just this like freak dude who was like a divorcee who would like sit at the bar every single night and order the same thing and sort of chat all of our ears off. Yeah, and he was a pain in the ass, and everybody didn't like him because it would like you know make the closing very hard because he wouldn't like leave. And then he would ask for like a yeah. ride home, and he really like you know, like assumed this kind of it's strange intimacy, intimacy. Yeah. and everyone there was How just sort was of like, he? he was old. He was like 50. Yeah. Or something yeah. Like that. They always come to old shows, guys. Like in retrospect, I thought mm. he was kind of hot, Silver but like, I always just feel like in that sort of like regular customer interaction, like it's always like the employee who's like just weirded out and sort of like cringing for the whole thing. Yeah. And just sort of like, cause you're at work. Yeah, like exactly. you're literally at work. Like, I mean, and I mean, like, I would love for that sort of thing to work out. Like, you know, when I worked at King's yeah. Bar, when I was at the restaurant, you know, doing counter service, I would love if one of those regular customers, like, we would kiki. I would, like, in, in my head, I would love if that happened. It never did. Like, I would be right. fully down to, like, have a sexual relationship with a regular customer, but it just never works that way. Right. It just doesn't work that way. It doesn't it's just work weird. that way. Because the people who want to engage any customer service worker are fucked in the head. They They're are. Weird. They are fucked in the head. That's that's actually, I think, a, a good point. The only anything totally. else going on right it's it, especially if one is a regular i mean i think being a regular somewhere is like kind of embarrassing as someone who's worked yeah, in the service like industry insane. yeah and because like it's like yeah i know how much money you spend per month at this establishment because and you know with technology these cringe. days yeah. Yeah, square <laughs> tells me i can like literally click one button and like, i know really I'm like, yeah it's totally, very embarrassing totally. it's really embarrassing <laughs> it's like oh Okay, girl, you spent like two thousand dollars on bagels last month. Like, <laughs> it's really, like, whatever. Kind of sad, actually. No, but like, I was gonna say anecdotally, the only time I did carry on with a bartender, um, briefly for like a couple months. Is that the one that fucked you? I mean, they yeah, they all fucked me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but specifically, was this a different one than the dating app one? Oh no, this well, and this so I was gonna same. say the caveat with this is that I did in the bar. We like had like an exchange but it's because we had just matched on tinder yeah and i don't think that and counts. so like while yeah, he was working then looked at his phone and then we were like there. and he's like did we just match on tinder and i was like yeah and i'm, like, I'm sure so like, it's like like assisted. beautiful charismatic person has a story about how they were working as a bartender like, right you know met the love of their life or met like right. the hottest sexiest person they got fucked so hard but like but for the most know, part for the average lay person like it's just right. generally kind of excuse me a loaded sort of like um like everyone's a loser type right. of power dynamic like i'm a loser for having this customer service job and you're a loser for trying to have sex with me exactly while i'm working this customer service job that's a good that's a great point my follow-up question is but he didn't seem like a loser this bartender i was finding myself attracted to this bartender as i was reading but maybe that's just because i'm this know, one no i think he actually was no i think like he had that thing that a lot of especially people in the service industry have where it's like you're 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 on like yeah exactly. you're like you know acting how to work a little bit you're tips. just yeah you're working and that's like your thing you know do you think if you were a destitute woman in their 40s like you would also form these fantasies about like a like charming bartender yeah, at a I sports definitely would bar form the fantasies but the act? one thing about me is i will never burst well i guess yeah, exactly. never I but i don't burst the bubble your own bubble exactly i that's like the, the mistake you want to be wanted you don't necessarily want to find out and that's like that's key and Absolutely. that's key also which is what i thought was interesting actually to go to quickly go back to the text like <laughs> i thought that, that was actually quite interesting about this narrator it was just like that i, she I took the step, this yeah. feels similar like at, like to real life like this is like a fantasy that you create and then when yeah. she did when she took the step i was like girl no like don't burst the bubble like it's uh -huh. gonna you're gonna shatter your own illusion and you know that's exactly what happens so maybe i guess that was intentional but maybe that yeah, is what I it's guess, about I feel but... like there is also just like i don't know well again maybe it is to speak to the realism of it all like she took the step to try to you know manifest the fantasy in physical reality and it just panned out in a sort of boring way and i guess that's probably exactly how it would happen in right. real life if me or you were in this position but like yeah. again am i sitting here like reading this like looking for 
representation for this specific experience? Not really. Because Not it's unless kind it's going to ordinary... reveal yeah, something. something. That's, yeah, that's a good point. And even the last line, I just feel like I just wanted him in my mouth the same way. Like, I don't know. I think it's a little bit of a cop out. At that point, you might as well say, like, I was sitting outside the restaurant crying, imagining his cock. She should have been the back of my throat. Off the old guy imagining exactly. his cock. Exactly. There you go. Exactly. And there's the compromise and between our two perspectives to make this an interesting I think story. This is, I think this is, I think you absolutely something. workshop this successfully. And, you know, I'm sort of let down by the editorial prowess of the New Yorker staffers for not right. suggesting that. Right. Come on. So, no, I, wait, I have one more question for yes, you. Go ahead. Um, sorry to, you know, no, we've got time. Boot in here. Yeah. Um, given everything you just said, which I agree with, other than at work, where is the worst place to get asked out? Other than at work? Other than at work, where is the worst place to get asked out? I mean, I feel like I just don't necessarily have the experience to answer this question because I've never been someone who's gotten asked out every sort oh, of Oh, it doesn't encounter. have to be a real, it could be hypothetical. Yeah, hypothetical. So I have to just like think for a second. Well, no, why don't you answer can't. the question? What do you think? What do I think? Worst place to get asked out? I didn't prepare an answer. <laughs> Family reunion comes to mind. It's the old <laughs> joke. Um, <laughs> would you have sex with a cousin like a first cousin or second cousin i feel like if the i feel it's like second if, and above it's i fine. F- honestly honestly speaking i feel like if the circumstances were white right i would have sex with a first do cousin. i know that they're my my cousin yes or, no i, I mean like no. I and i like know all my cousins so like i wouldn't but I if mean, it was like no, a, a I just, distant I want to make it very cousin. clear i'm not referring to any of my actual first <laughs> cousins if somehow someone comes across this which absolutely they won't but like i'm not speaking about like literally sure. about you know any first cousin i may or may not have but see if the circumstances were absolutely right i think i would have sex with a first cousin if it was if i like did not know them then I then I would yeah even if I did like say we grew up together to some extent I think I still would you know and I mean certainly I would certainly draw the line at like sibling but I would absolutely step sibling and cousin sure you know I think recently I did there's an article about this recently it's like one in seven thousand people or something is have sex with their step no no is oh, um, a, a product, product of incest, of incest. And it's, like, this really secretive thing that people, like, don't want to talk about. Um, And I thought that was so interesting because it's, I mean, it is so shameful. But, like, you had nothing to do with it, you know? Like, to be the child, like... like, I don't think I would have a complex about that, would you? I feel like it would be embarrassing to tell people. Well, if they were siblings, then you'd be, like, like, you know, totally nerfed in the head, probably. No, but I think that's the thing is that... I'd be, like, ew, but I wouldn't be, Not cousins. The study is on, like, first-degree relatives. Oh. Yeah, but people... So it's, like very secretive but how would you even be able to keep that as a secret i guess not necessarily from your child but yeah i guess it'd be very easy for you to not lie sure. about your family past of me you know for example like i i you know for all i know your yeah parents it was behind a paywall brothers. so i didn't you know yeah, exactly you know and but... that is the you know state of my parents are today. brothers <laughs> just to go back to that <laughs> slay. Slay. my two, my two gay two... dads are yeah. actually brothers <laughs> slay no i think um I, and i also think I like like, um, actually, did you know in Iceland, I, I don't know if this is a rumor. I actually think this is true. Um, as of several years ago, I was told around 2016, there was an app that you could use to um, make sure that to, like, like, you'd be like at the club, like trying to have a dance floor, make out, whatever. And you could like check to see and it would give you and, and then it would tell you whether or not you were related. My follow up question is, would you rather know how how distantly you're related with a stranger in this context on the dance floor or whatever or just get a green like a like a green means go red stop you know would you rather know like okay this is my third cousin or like my first yeah, cousin I guess, or rather just a like green I, you're outside yeah. the range and, and you would the may range be, be related like third cousins is a-okay i feel like it would be second cousins because in iceland small this this is now total conjecture very true so i wouldn't want to know if every joe schmo is my second cousin i would just want to give me a green light or a red light i would personally be fine with knowing either way i don't think i would really care yeah i don't know maybe Maybe everyone does it in iceland though yeah you know like i don't know i feel like this is kind of like debauchery that someone who is homosexual but i mean you're dyke as well yeah but but there's always like the the, there's always like no matter what iud whatever the fuck you do it's like 
Yeah, what, like, what if this if, is the yeah. time that this random ass dude I'm knocks like, me out? I'm suddenly up. like pregnant with my first cousin's baby. Right. Like, and it's like, then I have a whole other set of choices and questions that I don't fucking want to do. Do you with. think this story would then it becomes a family affair? Benefit if it was an incest story, like a first or second oh, cousin? Oh, that's like so in right now, too. I feel like in I feel fiction like to do all this. It's like, I know. why is it well, they were like doing the in the alt 70s? It's fiction too. thing. Uh, you know, that yeah, book I read, so Body High by John Lindsay, where it's like, yeah, within the Catherine first 50 Dunn pages. Does it. Yeah, within the yeah. first 50 pages, he's already like raping his like uh, incest sister. It's like, yeah, yeah, everybody See, wants to write an incest story. We're talking about when we talk about mood board, it's like not necessarily. But I do that. feel like there is something about There's like. There's something mood. Yeah, like something that a 16 year old girl who may or may not write, make a mood board based off of a That's story, true. like would be drawn towards an incest true. narrative. Did this you is ever feel, did you, as, as a young girl, as a teen girl, did you ever feel drawn to incest? No, I don't think I, I really don't think I did. I mean, that wasn't like a plot line. Incest does sort of loom large over the cultural consciousness, to use that phrase a second time in this podcast, of like the gay man. All of our porn is like, but I feel like that just runs the gamut across the board of like straight and gay porn. I mean, a lot of gay porn is incest. Yeah. No, that's so interesting. Like it's always like uncle secret or like daddy fun or like shit like that, you know? So I feel like incest is generally like something that, yeah. you know, is always in the back of a certain person's mind. Right. I think it's And that's, like, why, that's also why I don't find incest particularly engaging in fiction. Because I'm like, ah, oh, whatever, girl. Yeah, it's like, we're all well, thinking about funny it. Funny you say that. I just, um, the book that I had to read for uh, my Victorian for Lit class. Yeah. Fucking um, Tom, Thomas Hardy, Jude the Obscure. It The whole plot line is two cousins yeah. who are like grappling with their incestuous relationship you think and like oh this is really a tale as old as time as a nation the fact that we're not like having sex with our cousins should we be having like sex grappling with our cousins? no because that's giving kind of like darwin and then that's <laughs> yeah. slow. so like perhaps no... out of our range is a podcast discussing yeah ethics. right yeah uh, but i don't know i mean i, I think it, in, it is a in, recurring inherently theme. yeah I, know, and I think it's just because writers are naturally just like shit stirrers, which is interesting because the New yeah. Yorker perspective, I think, is particularly like in contrast to that. Like, I don't think anybody who gets a story in the New Yorker is necessarily a shit stirrer. No, no. And that's why the ones that end up like blowing up end up blowing up because they're like odd little flashes of that. Yeah. Like, Cat I do. Person. Yeah, exactly. To, 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 invoke, to allude. Yeah, to, to, invoke. to invoke the great, yeah, name. I think was a bit of a shit stirring right. story right and this certainly does not feel like shit stirring this feels like this story feels like an emotional conclusion that i feel like most kind of rationally minded new yorker readers would also find themselves coming to if they were in this situation right and i often find that disappointing in fiction i would like to be surprised a little bit yeah you know, I agree. or like i don't know made uncomfortable a little bit i agree there's something about the the sort of uh this seems like a capable space. woman who is doing the best that she can, you know? Yeah, I it's think like, she's she's producing, like, good work yeah, and I'm, that's I'm, getting published. In terms of the, the, the protagonist, specifically. Oh, like, this, this, is, yes. this is a story about, like, a capable woman who's emotionally mature. Right, right. And I'm like... Which maps. That yeah. kind of coheres to... And exactly, yeah, to the, what we got from thing. the interview yeah. as well. Yeah, yes, yes. And and I would say... And I'm like, you know, like a round of applause for the New Yorker readers being able to have this experience and identify with it, you know? Yeah, it literally could never be me. Uh, yeah, it could never be me. Like, uh, yeah. I've made a scene at a bar, too. As you should, as you should. Our God-given right. Okay, well, are we... No, I mean, we still have time. Oh, slay. Let me see if I have any other questions for you. I mean, do you have anything that you want to say about this piece? Oh, the anything worst about place life in general. You didn't answer. The worst oh, the worst place, place asked we asked out. out. I don't know. Maybe I mean <sighs> the first thing I would say was like at a funeral. That's but I feel what like I that was would actually thinking. be like really hot, and I would actually like be totally into that. So when I asked me at a funeral, I'd be like, oh, absolutely. Yeah, that actually would be kind of interesting. I don't. Know, I feel like I would be like absolutely enthusiastic to be asked out anywhere. Or, Frankly, if anybody came up to me and approached me and asked me on a date, even if they were the ugliest, like nastiest looking like grease ball, like, yeah. I would absolutely be flattered and absolutely enthusiastic. Slight. Yeah. Absolutely slight. Would you say yes? I would probably say yes, but then just then right at the end. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Because I don't know. I feel like I would be a little bit too anxious in that situation to kind of right. voice my, my... people pleasing tendencies exactly. would also kind of you know, take and then over. it's like we can deal with this strategically when I have a phone between you and me. Right. Exactly. That happened to me one time. I was You're the opposite this. of the narrator in this story, actually. I really, no, I very much am. <laughs> but I was thinking about this recently. So this is when I was still like kind of really fat, and this is still when I was with my ex, I believe. But my my ex envy best friend took me to like some like bullshit experimental theater production, Slay. and there was like this trans guy that I thought was particularly attractive. And when I think about it in retrospect, I think they were like very early transition type of like female the male but i was this is when i was pretending to be a top when i was like so the only reason why i was pretending to be a top is because i was really big at the time and i aesthetically i felt like that was the only thing that made sense i was sort of embarrassed to be a fat bottom but at the end of this like experimental fiction show i just sort of like like very clumsily like clamored up to this like recently transitioned like trans man i was like hey, I think you're uh, really cool and I want to hang out sometime. Can I get your number? Slay! And they gave me their number, but they obviously did not reply to any of my texts because, I mean, I was a total, like, like grease ball. Like, it was disgusting. And that sort of embarrassing experience sort of stuck with me. And, um, you know, I think it ended up working out in the end because I don't think I would have had a particularly... Like for either of us, I don't yeah. Think that situation would have, and they had the foresight to reject my advance. Yeah. When I did not have that foresight, so um, wherever you are, blonde trans man, you know. I, but I, but I want to say go fuck yourself because like they didn't reply to my text. Like go, go fuck yourself. Right. Yeah. It was so embarrassing too. I sent like multiple texts. I was like, hope you're getting these. Hope your show oh, goes no. well tonight. Yeah, it was. It's it was okay. We've all bad. been. We've been. We've all and been. You know what? As we that. age, we strand. learn dignity you yeah know. it comes when you turn 25 first of all i think anything below that it's just it's just a hard sell on a developing brain dignity i just you know every time i've tried to make an like an opening move it like always kind of goes south i just feel like i have like sort of a like threatening sort of like just like stay away sort of vibe or like if i try to ask i someone think i out, have the same problem yeah it's like you know there's like a sort of instinctual thing that most people have when they like should understand sort of intuitively that they should like stay away from someone right that like more trouble than it's worth and i feel like i definitely ring those alarm bells for most people maybe not so much anymore <laughs> but back then certainly you know i i think i probably was doing the same and just less self-aware when's of... the last time you ever asked someone out uh I don't think I've ever asked someone out in person. Ever... Not in person. Yeah, absolutely not. Like, I'm... but over text. Um, I, I've asked I a few think... girls out over text. Think, yeah, you know, I don't think that necessarily counts. Yeah, I've never not asked because it's like anybody dyke out or anything. But I mean, like, but I've yeah. never like asked. I've never I've approached someone for, for their number. number. No, never. I've left my and number I... like on the receipt for like a hot bartender, <laughs> and, and it's not happen? paid out. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> Except for that one guy on Tinder, but it was like we were already. Yeah, and that was also. So overall, what would you, so we have Neighbors, we both gave Neighbors by Zach Williams. Yeah. Um, we both gave it a four star rating. Yeah. I, would, I think I would give this a three. I, I try to refrain from half star ratings. Oh, you're so, a half star refrainer. Yeah. I like the kind of cut and dry, oh. like let's make a decision here. You know what I mean? I think I would give this three stars i think i would give this a firm three stars i found myself rolling my eyes quite a bit Maybe i would I'm actually... a misogynist and i sort of feel like a misogynist by like the no i don't think it's I, that i'm here to tear no. this apart with but like i don't know i found myself sort of just like like i was reading this i, I was like this is in the new yorker like truly really honestly i feel like this is something we'd read in workshop yeah like, truly i really do i i and i and i i would give it before i read the interview i would give it four stars and then after I read the interview, I'd give it three stars. Is that fair? Um, Do you think? Not entirely, but, but I, I feel like they it gave did us draw this, my yes. attention. Actually, because I think this is the pitfall of um, explaining this story, is that it drew my attention to things when I read it again yeah. that I wasn't paying attention to the first time. About And I feel like that is necessarily fair. Like I feel like yeah. if I were to read this again, my opinion would right because if i could go back and make the case solidly for my original read of this i think i would feel differently but 
unfortunately, after reading the interview, I am, yeah, noticing. Because, like, you know, are we left necessarily with anything, like, juicy, anything we want to take away and discuss and, like, send, like, I would never send this story to someone and be like, oh, you have to read this. Yeah, you know? no, it, I would, this isn't mood board to me. No, I, I don't think so at all. Um... I don't think she's advertising a story collection coming out either. I think this is just something she submitted no. and it was right place, right time. And this really lot. makes me think like, what the fuck is the New York really looking for with their fiction? Like, come on guys, come on. Not sure. Not sure what they want, but yeah. apparently it's not what we're offering. Yeah. And it probably <laughs> never will be. Okay. Well, with that being said, thank Play. you so much. Yeah. For listening to our, I, I, this is a more studious episode. I feel exactly. Kind of, I and feel we like had our, our mics maybe more figured out. Yeah. And so hopefully you enjoyed, yeah. I mean, either way, um, do the podcast things. If you are somehow listening and listening for the first time, I mean, on YouTube, like give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. I mean, yes. quite literally my subscribers, all of you just kind of dropped the ball. And I was really shocked that like only one of you commented, which shout out to you. I hope you're doing well. I know you don't live in like the Lake Forest area anymore. Hey girl, sorry. Like specifically to the one person who commented because <laughs> I recognize them. They're a lot of viewer. Um, just leave a comment, leave a thumbs up. If you're listening on any of the two podcast platforms, do that too. Follow us on Instagram. We're, girl, we're really trying with this. We you are. Know? And with that, I mean, with that, thank you. Thank you. Have a good week. We'll see you next week. Slay! Slay!